All right, guys, and welcome into the next episode of the Sweat Session re Review. Today we have Reaver993 from Croatia. I don't know your first name, bro, but he goes by this username as well on uh, Discord, boys. Um, we're playing 25 and L Russian cash today. I hope that's what it is, bro, because uh, I can't see the exact uh, stakes, but I'm assuming it is 25 and L from what I saw from the footage. Um... So yeah, I just want to highlight this again, guys. Um, if anybody is interested in getting this done, be sure to join in the Discord link below in the description. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a no-brainer, guys. The next couple of weeks, unfortunately, are booked up after this one that will be released on Friday. But that's still no excuse for you guys not to get in the Discord and, you know, just, just get involved. And you'll obviously get tagged when there's a one available going forward. So... Yeah, this this is just a great opportunity for anybody that's playing micro stakes, guys. I would be happy happy to do a sweat session review with anyone that's maybe playing, you know, hundred nil, even two hundred nil, fifty nil, whatever the case may be. I'm open to any possibility. It's going to be up to you if you want to get it done. If you want to, we'll say expose your username on a site. I'll leave that up to you. Okay, look for anybody that's playing micro stakes or small stakes in general. I think this is a no brainer. Um, if you watch the streams, guys, I'm playing two hundred nil Zoom four table in the whole time okay anybody that watches the stream knows how i think no know, knows how i play you know and uh, i do think i have a lot to offer and it's free lads it's not doesn't cost anyone a penny to do this all you have to do is click a link to join the discord direct message me on discord or as i said there will be a sweat session review thread in the discord check out when the next available one is but i will tag at everyone when the next one is available so i just wanted to plug that before we jump into this mate so without further ado boys good luck sir good luck sir i like i like that man <laughs> just just again that's just like respect because that just shows that you've been watching the previous sweat session reviews where i basically said to people to mark players in general and usually guys with broken stacks are going to be guys that are, um you know, going to be doing that. This King 10 for me, mate, is going to be a low frequency tree bet. So it depends on what range you're using and what sort of frequency you're doing this at. Um, But yeah, just kind of highlighting that this is going to be a low frequency tree bet for me, small blind versus button. But the tree bet is absolutely fine nonetheless. Obviously tree bet and King Queen suited there as well. Without any hesitation. Oops, forgot to mute that audio. Oh, we'll mute that now. Apologies there. You can hear him in the background there for a moment, but it's okay. So we get the three back through as well, which is good. Uh, this Queen 8 is a bit on the wider side here as well. I'm not sure what your purple tag means, but just be conscious of opening too wide here, mate. I don't mind doing this with a recreation in the blind, so maybe that was your, uh, you know, reason for doing that. But uh, Queen A for me, in general, is going to be a bit too much on the wider side. Would, would, if I was going to deviate, I mean, it's not the worst time to open. There's obviously worse times you could open in itself, but suit of hands will definitely play better than offsuit ones in general. So I'd rather see you open, I don't know, maybe some 5-3 suited more often there, 4-6 suited. Um, I don't know, like, some, something along those lines in terms of that. But I definitely wouldn't push it any further than Queen 8 off, mate. Like, I'd rather open Jack 8 off there. Like, the thing is, what I usually say to people, bro, is that whatever hands might be mixed, I will always open pure when there's a recreation in the blind. I think it's a very easy deviation to remember overall. I like that always check and range here. It's it's funny because you said you've watched a lot of my uh, material, mate. So I'm hoping to see a lot of the a lot of the stuff. So you've seen a passive tag there being implemented. Checking here, I like as well. I like going for just a call here. Not going to do anything else except just call it. I'd say no need to raise. I doubt, but the problem is here, man. If you raise here, I'm not sure many. I'm not sure how many worse hands are going to um call here. Now, if this guy is a weaker player, I don't mind doing it. But in general, I would more so just call here than raise. But I don't mind going for a small raise here. 
What I think in practice when I see this block bed here, it is never going to be protected with enough nutted hands overall. So we don't have to worry about ever, you know, if we get three bed here, we're basically fucked. It's, it's that simple. As I said, the only problem is I don't expect many worse hands to call here. But on these stakes, sometimes you just don't know. We do get the fold anyways. I, I, I think calling there is fine, mate. Either way, I think raising is fine. But as long as you're raised folding, that would be the main thing. And I like the call on the button here as well with sevens. Therefore, therefore, I like the call here with sevens. Yeah, guy is fairly splashy as well with the 43 V pip, which is obviously good to take into account. Yeah, obviously him leading here on this situation here. I, I would just start folding already here, Mace. Like, this guy's partners into three other players where, yeah, okay, the big blinds range is going to connect more with, more with this board in general, but we'll definitely just be getting out of the way here, which, yeah, especially when this guy calls. Like, this guy has to continue so, like, restricted in terms of, like, just just hands in general like i'm talking like flush draws obviously can't fall but like there might be some like you know if he has eight nine of spades here that might have to start falling here for example you know maybe some jack x of spades here like jack eight suited jack nine suited i might start falling that on the flop here already bro you know uh, and maybe just continue like like even over pairs like eights nines tens man i'm fucking shitting my pants here uh with this situation on the turn or sorry on the flop Like, well, yeah, and that's the thing, man, like, the, the, the hijack has to understand that there's, like, the big blind is leading into three players for one, for pot. And then he has to worry about two players behind as well, which, you know, this board does hit the cold call and range of, you know, you on the button and also potentially the guy on the hijack, or sorry, on the cutoff. But obviously sevens is a very, very easy fold. Now, in saying that, bro, if this folded around to you, even with the face of the pot size bet... I still think that's very, very close between defending and not. Because, yeah, okay, you have a good shot to the straight, but you're probably never going to get paid on the straight if you, if you get there. Yeah, you have the seven of spades, but is it ever good when it runs out spade, spade? You know what I mean? You could just be drawn dead against some of the better flush draws in particular. So I, I think you would have folded that, I, I feel. I, I'm on about now if the hijack didn't, if the hijack didn't call is what I mean. I like that call and twos here, in my opinion, is going to be fine also. Yeah, so obviously you're using the high RNG for the more passive line and the lower one for the aggression, which is what I, which is what I use myself. So like that on these monotone textures, man, we're definitely not going to be C-betting sixes, but at the same time, there is a benefit to doing it. Obviously getting just a nine equity to some, you know, random jack eight. Just any two random overcards in general without a diamond, which is always a good thing. But I, I do like checking back these sixes because like that, if you face a bet here, you can just easily fold. You can just check it down against ace highs and stuff like that. I will still just check this down though, even though we have very little showdown. Now, you could argue raising here on the river and I wouldn't mind that at all. I really, really wouldn't mind that at all because sixes at this point doesn't have that much showdown value. And I do think this node will be overfolded for the most part facing the raise. Um, and I also just think this is way too many, maybe one pair hands, uh, potentially some two pair hands would make sense here too. Like if I'm in the out of position player shoes here, I am basically picking this size in with the vast majority of my range. I don't know what I picked the size in with my bluffs, but I think it has to be coinciding with that. Um, but I'd rather just fold here mostly and not worry too much about it, mate, honestly, because I just don't think people are going to be value betting that size. Or not value betting, but they're not going to be picking that size in with bluffs ever, even though they should. Because it works really, really well. Why does that light keep going off? Sorry, guys. Happened to me earlier on as well. Um, but yeah, just do take that into account. That people are probably not going to bluff for that size, even though they should, because it performs very, very well against... Um, yeah, just against the... That part of your range, basically. And it's just a very, very cheap bluff as well, which is nice.
Yeah, this 3-2 against the fish, I don't mind defending it, but against the reg, I would be over four, not over four, it's just I wouldn't be defending pre uh, pretty much. And I don't see a reason to raise here against the recreation, and I'll tell you why, because it's going to be very, it's not going to be like, it's not, it's not like they're going to overfold, they're probably going to end up overcalling any pair here, but fish are going to overbluff in this line. So I would rather take a passive line with these baby flushes and capitalize on that overbluff than potentially ballooning the pot here, getting all his random air to fold on the flop here, you know, making all his kind of one pair of hands indifferent, because you can obviously bet this on the river if it goes check, check on the turn, a non flush, a non four to a flush boards. Um, but the big thing I want to point out here, River, is basically the fact that this node is going to be overbluffed from recreationals overall. I need to ask yourself, is it better to check call this hand exploitatively against that profile, or is it better to raise and start building a pot when he has a lot of air in the C-bet range here in general? So look, I don't mind raising here, but understanding the, the, the bad runouts as well, like on a spade turn, like it's just going to kill all your action, which is what happens. Unless the ace of spades comes, obviously, although he might have queen jack. Yeah, I mean, we'll just check here. Given how fast he checked back the turn, I would probably still check call river. I don't see the point in betting here because it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult to get called by worse. Okay, so like this is the thing, like, you know, block betting performs well when you're going to get called by many worse hands that should be raising. But in this situation, man, it's extremely, extremely difficult to, call, to get called by worse, in my, in my opinion. Like... He might call some King X here, fair enough. But that is literally it, mate. He still has a lot of, like, you know, offsuit hands with a spade and stuff like that. So, I don't think I'd be betting 3-2 here. I'd honestly rather just check call against his profile. Yeah, see, that's the issue. I'd rather check call against his profile against... Not going to say all sizing schemes, but would rather just check call to, again, capitalize on an overbluff. But I think the mistake... Again, it's not a mistake, a big mistake, but as I said, I'd rather capitalize on EV because of the overbluff from this profile in general. Um, but I do think check call in the flop, check call in the turn, and then probably check fall in the river is probably going to be the best play for the most part. But as I said, I do think overall just check call and flop is going to be what I would do most, if not all the time. Like, the only reason for check raising that flop there is to build a pot when you have a hand, and then when you have some blockers to the flush, like a queen, a jack, an ace, etc. Then baby flushes, man. Yeah, okay, they might be raised at a frequency against somebody that might be potentially over betting on that board. But it's just going to be difficult to get three streets of value, you know? And it's better to capitalize on a potential overbluff from either profiles in the formations. Um, yeah, it just, it just doesn't really benefit us by raising that on the flop, bro, in my opinion. Like, you can go either way with this hand as well. Like, I, probably on a mid to low, mid, mid to high RNG here, I actually might check this back. But people are going to be overfolding on, uh, people are going to be overfolding on ASI boards in general, so I don't mind being a little bit more aggressive in general itself. On this turn, man, it's a good hand to bet, bet, bet. But the thing is, people are overbarreling these sort of hands on the turn in practice. So I actually wouldn't mind checking this back on the turn, which again, RNG based decision. So yeah, it, it's on an 85 here. So I would definitely be checking back here, mate. I would definitely be checking back on this turn. um, Cause you can't always barrel these hands. Like it would be better to just barrel like King six of clubs here. Although in fairness, having Jack in a hearts here kind of doesn't block too much of the floats on the flop. It's not like you're blocking diamond floats or anything like that. You don't block spades as well, but you do block some like 10 X, like nine, 10, and stuff like that. So it's not a hand I'd see about always. And I do think on a high roll on an 85 mid, I would just check it back for that purpose. Look, double barrel in this, not gonna be a mistake in terms of EV and whatnot. Um, but the thing is with this hand on the river, you are probably always gonna have to bluff your own block and spades. That's the thing. So you always have to bluff this river. See, this is the thing. And you know, doing, doing an overbet here would be a mistake, in my opinion. I would, I would rather go for an overbet here and be a little bit more polarized, bro. bro. Put, put, just put more pressure on Ace X. Like, if you have some like Ace 5, Ace 6 here, just make that indifferent by going for an overbet here. And the Queen is good for your range as well, because you're going to have way more Ace Queen, if not like all combos of Ace Queen that will play, play it this exact way. 
you're still going to have five, six, you're going to have sevens, eights, you know, ace, eight, ace, seven that wants to go for an overbet here. So this sizing scheme on this river mate doesn't really make sense, in my opinion. And this is the thing. Yeah, you just you just have to put pressure on that mate. I'm not going to say if you overbet there that he's going to always fold, but think about your value threshold here and what size it makes sense. Like, of course you can pick three quarters here maybe with ace king. Or maybe some like, uh, the thing is like ace nine, ace ten might not want to go off of three streets of value. The mistake here is not polarizing on the river mate. Because flop sizing is fine, turn sizing is fine. Which is general heuristic in terms of straight completing turns you can't really overbet for the most part. Although he shouldn't have that much 5-6. But on the river mate, on this brick river where nothing changed, it's going to be a spot where you're supposed to be very, very polar. Um, But I'd probably rather just check back the turn on the high RNG that you had is what I would rather do there. But yeah, that's that that's that's gonna be a good one to take a lot from this, in my opinion. This might be five cent, ten cent, mate. I, I, look, I apologize for not knowing. I apologize for not knowing here. If it's ten, if it's ten twenty-five or or twenty-five or just, I just don't know what stake it is. I mean, look, my my advice and and, and all that is going to be the same. Don't get me wrong. It's it's kind of irrelevant what stakes they are. Because I still will be pretty much pointing out like the exploits and you know what you should be doing more and what you should be doing less of, regardless of the player pool so much. Um, but I forgot to ask which one it was, and usually people don't hide. I mean, it's not your fault, mate. Don't get me wrong. Um, queens here against this profile, I think I'd always be calling. I think I'd always be calling. I mean, it's a pretty high frequency call in these formations, anyways. I think it's like a low frequency raise here. It might be raised 50-50. I'm not too sure. I'd have to cross-reference my ranges for 500 nil. Uh, so face the half pot on this board here, man. We do have to defend one, but this guy appears to be on the more, you know, passive side. And if he checks here, I, I honestly would rather just check this back exploitatively and probably just always bluff catch on rivers. But if he starts bombing this turn, man, kind of one of those things where I don't really feel like we can fold as well. Like half pot here. I mean, definitely still calling here. Probably going to call, call, fold, honestly. Probably going to call, call, fold against this profile. Yeah, and the thing is, man, on this river, you're going to have way better hands to call. So this isn't even a really good bluff catcher at all. Um, You know, I'd rather have queens with a spade here, but honestly, against this profile, man, I don't think bluff catchers are stuff that you imagine in theory is even going to be that relevant here. If he jams all in here, this across, i uh, sorry, in general, this is going to be under bluffed. Um... So you're just going to be saving a lot of money here by folding. But I do think calling flop and turn is absolutely standard. Because we've also the nuts on a queen, for example. We're still ahead of some of his bluffs, potentially. But um, look, you're going to have pocket eights. You're going to have pocket tens. You're going to have pocket sevens. You're going to have eight seven suited. Like, even king ten here, bro, is in a fucking shit spot. Is in a fucking shit spot here, bro. But I do think folding queens there is the, is, is the, is the very, very easy option there overall. So these monotone textures, man, it's not that you can't see bet them, but they are very, very low frequency see bets on average. In other words, they're very, very selective in what you do see bet. Um, but I would honestly just probably simplify the check and range on these boards, blind v blind. Like even if this wasn't monotone, I'd be pretty confident in just checking high frequency and not worrying too much about it. But this is obviously a nice hand. This is obviously a nice hand to check call. And... Um, yeah, just 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 play your hand with it with, with, with a check call for the most part. Never leading this turn because of the texture on the flop. I doubt anyways. Uh and I wouldn't mind just betting small here, mate. I wouldn't mind just betting small. I think this is fine for the most part. I do actually like picking the small bet here overall. Which you end up doing. Like, again, if you get raised, your mate, you're just basically fucked for the most part, I would say. He's just going to call a lot worse hands here. and Like, he's basically just going to call hands he's supposed to raise, in my opinion. But on these textures as a whole, mate, there's a lot of data points here to just start falling immediately. Four to a straight, flop, fourth monotone, stuff like that, mate. So, I like black bet falling here. 
I like block bet falling here in general. Ace queen. You can probably still bet this at a frequency, mate, simply because, again, just to deny equity, equity to two random overcards. If you face a bet here in the probe line, still probably have to call for more sizes on the pot, I'd say. Um, but I don't mind see betting this at a frequency as well, because, again, it's just like it's important to understand as well that, yeah, OK, you don't have the best back doors. You still have some showdown value. Again, checking and betting this, in my opinion, is not going to be a mistake, especially on the 99 X boards. Because the out of position player will probably have a decent, or sorry, the out of position player will have a decent more a, a, a nine x advantage for the Osu combos in particular. But uh, we do have to defend here. We do have to defend here. Obviously, River and the tree order is nice. Don't know if you need it as well potentially, but I don't know how often you stab in too many other hands. Bar King X on the turn here. Something around three quarters here seems fine. I like that. Yeah. You can definitely still find some block bets with like some maybe sevens, eights, jacks, tens. But um, yeah, that's probably about it, if even. But obviously we have to call versus the small bet on the turn. Defending ace nine versus three X is probably okay. I will start folding ace eight though. Do find the call. Um, in this node, man, you can go block bet. You can even go 10% here, honestly, in this situation on this board texture. But definitely wouldn't be going any bigger than 33. And you can also check here to check call, which is not a mistake either. But I do prefer just prefer or just betting small here, given how fast he checked back the turn. And again, like that, mate, he might end up over calling some Jack X, some 10X. And maybe some eights and nines, for example, you wouldn't know. But I do prefer just block betting there instead of checking and facing the bet because I think that's going to be somewhat close to, um, you know, underbluffed. It might be just depending on profile. If it's going to be like you know, if if checking or betting is going to be the better alter or sorry, the better option on the on uh, sorry on the river from your perspective. Yeah, and, I, and I, li I like that you're stabbing this as well because this is what this is these are the hands the population miss the most. Um these are the hands the population miss the most in terms of stabbing. So that's what the delay C bet node that people are overfalling, that they have way too much air in their checkback range, and they're not stabbing enough of these hands on the flop as in position pre-flop caller. And and this is the thing, man, like this is just huge that they're overfalling versus bet small like that as well. Like, ima imagine that being the case where you can just, like, bet small with, like, queen high and just take down the pot of, of, of six big lines or five, five point five, whatever it was. Like, that's huge, man. That's really, really big. And, and that's what I'm saying, man. A lot of players are missing... A lot of players are missing them stabs as the imposition player. So, the thing is, like I always say, when a node is overfolded, you should shift a lot of the mixed hand between bet and check into the bet line. Especially with the air hands or the air part of your of your range. Yeah, and this is just gonna be a fall versus that size on. Yeah, well played. Well played. I mean, you just, just can't defend there like without the backdoor flush door really. Don't even know if your ace is good. Just gonna get very, very marginal on runouts there like that, but I just think falling is gonna be the best play. So like in a high RNG here, I would be checking this back. And this is the thing, man, I know you're probably talking through the hands here, but we won't hear your commentary. But obviously, I'll, I'll just commentate on it myself in terms of, like, you know, what you did. Or, sorry, what you ended up doing and what you should have done. But definitely calling this ace-king here and just checking back now. Seems like the play. Again, we don't expect to win here too often, but we do beat some, you know, 6-7, seven, 7-9, seven, etc. Some random fucking king-jack, which is just, again, horrendously played. Um, so like that betting here seems good. It's gonna polarize on this turn now because it's just an absolute brick, it doesn't change anything. Yeah, I I I I don't mind just setting up the SPR here for a jam, mate. You still might overcall like some, I don't know, ace X of hearts, maybe pair plus draw itself, but definitely polarizing on that turn.
Wouldn't mind flicking in a check raise here, by the way, if he does go for a small bet. I wouldn't be... I don't think I'd be check calling in these positions. If I'm going to do anything, it's either going to be fold or raise at a frequency. So I don't really like check calling here. Like, if this was blind be blind, I, I would mix call and fold, or sorry, call and raise. But I think in these formations, man, it's going to change the strategy a little bit because the imposition call callers range is going to be a lot more different than it will be small blind versus big blind and that call and range itself. So we need to be a little bit more careful in them situations. I, I, I wouldn't, I would never, um, I would never incentivize over folding. But as I said, I want you to take into account that it's important to, um, you know, just understand that these positions are going to play a lot more different than it would be blindly blind. And that's mostly because of the calling range. And I wouldn't mind going for a check to check call here on the river. Again, block betting in practice, man, is going to perform better most of the time. Most of the time, anyways. So, yeah. I, I, I'm okay with the check here. I'm okay with the check. But we, 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 we have to check call here. We have to check call here in this line. The fact is he snapped he snap bet, which is not something that I'm happy about. But I don't think we can check call this flop, mate, and then just end up check falling this river. I wouldn't be a fan of it. Would not be a fan of it at all. Again, we're not going to win here too often, but it's just a node where... They might have enough bluffs on average, but as I said, it's just one of those things we have to accept that in a discontinued line here, even in these formations, it is going to lead to an overbluff, I guess. And that's what I mean. So well played. Very well played with the 910. And I do prefer checking there most of the time. If that was blind v blind, maybe checking there is still okay. But I do think there's a lot worse hands that might end up calling there blind v blind. That block betting might be better. Again, for because ranges are just wider overall. Um, but yeah. It's good, uh, good call. Good, uh, good check call on the river. I like it. See if we make some money with aces. Negative. This is one thing that people are going to not be too keen about, but we definitely can't be overfalling here in this situation, so I like that. Defo, defo like that you're not overfalling there. And I wouldn't be one for Duncan on this turn with this hand in particular. Because the thing is, man, you donking on this turn doesn't really benefit this hand. So, of course, as I said, I know you've been watching my material and you see me doing this a lot, whether on stream or, or, or maybe some of the sweat session reviews, play, play and explains, whatever the case may be. This hand is still ahead of King Queen. You know, King Jack, Queen 10, that's going to check back on this turn a lot or a decent amount anyway, especially the, the, the stronger King X. And obviously you're still ahead of some like Ace 8, Ace 6. And ace five that well ace five might end up over barrel in this turn but the only time you want to donk bet on turns man is obviously do it with seven x here maybe do it with some four x and and stuff like that five six and, and that's probably about it i'd say on this board texture in particular um but doing it with ace nine here man doesn't really make that much sense like a lot of the time when you want to do this is to realize equity where somebody might not raise in position enough or they might overfold or they just might fold in general. And obviously that benefits your hand very well when you have like, you know, 6-8 here, for example, would be another good one. 5-3, if you check call that on the flop. But doing it with ace-9 here, mate, doesn't make that much sense. So the main reason why you want to dunk is firstly to realize equity and also when cards in general are better for your range. But it's also important to understand what part of your range actually benefits from dunking and when it doesn't. Okay, and in my opinion, ace nine here, check call and flop is absolutely fine. But doing this on the turn with ace nine here, from my perspective, really doesn't benefit your really doesn't benefit that at all. Like check call and flop here is fine, but if you face a bet on the turn here with ace nine, mate, just 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 fold and and be okay with that. The main thing that you need to do is just not overfold on the flop. Like I don't want you to call ace nine here on the turn because you defended ace nine on the flop and you're ahead of X Y and Z. You potentially are. But it's more so if this goes check check on the turn and you get to realize your equity by the river. If you get what I mean. But like, as I said, understand the hands that want to benefit from Duncan. And ace nine, for me personally, is just not going to be one of those hands, bro. It's just not going to be one of those hands. 
because as I said, if he just checks back the flop there, it's just or checks back the turn with his king highs and stuff like that, or even worse, ace x, that's great for you. You know, if he checks if he checks back the turn in general, by the way, that's fucking great for you, bro. It's that's not a bad result, you know. Because you've got to realize all your equity by the river and still might be ahead of some of his check back range on the river if that does happen. Okay. Uh, so sizing here, yeah, something around 22, 23 here, but we are a little bit deeper, so I don't mind sizing up to maybe 24, 25 max. I wouldn't even go 25 here, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to slate you over one big blind bigger than I would go personally. Queen nine, we obviously have to call here. And turn sizing here, bro, is going to be on the more polar side, i.e. two thirds, maybe all in on the river. It just depends. But well, given we have the 9-10 blocker here and he checked the turn, we have to start bluffing now. And usually when you turn equity like this, mate, 70 to 120 is going to be used most of the time. Um, and if I had some air hand here, I'd rather just bet small and then maybe three quarters river exploitatively. But given we have the gut shot here, a general guideline 70 to 120 is what's going to be recommended in my opinion. Um, the ace king here, we obviously flops jack shit. But we are still ahead of some like ace jack and ace queen in his you know four back call range a three back call range i should say um so we still have a decent amount of showdown value here against like king queen king jack queen jack suited jack 10 suited stuff like that so the thing is like these blind v blind situations are not like there's a lot of like there's not like a lot of range betting going on there is on some board textures don't get me wrong but on these kind of nine high ten high disconnected two tone and whatnot this ace king without a club here mate will be a high frequency check and as I said, the reason for that is you're still ahead of a good bit of his uh, call range, four bet call range, sorry, three bet call range. So it's not like you always want to bet these hands. Like betting these to deny equity to some hands is fine, but understand that you don't have a club in your hand here. It might be a hand to bet bet jam on non flush completing runouts. But blind v blind here, man, ranges are a lot more wider than we'll say hijack versus under the gun, button versus hijack, etc. Okay, so strategies will differ. Because the ranges are wider. So checking frequencies are going to go up. Betting frequencies are going to go down. Etc. Yeah. I, I mean half pot here is fine. Yeah. 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 I like it. I like it. I like it. Like definitely betting the turn. Regardless with the queen nine is going to be G. So I'm happy. Uh, happy you did that. Pro problem is with the ace king here bro. Like you know. You just have to check fold here now I'd say. Uh, and, which, and which is fine, by the way. It's not a big deal. But, you know, check and flop to check call is, is, is not a bad play either. I actually wouldn't mind seeing that as well. So, you know, like, four-bit pots are pretty, you know, don't happen that often. But, you know, knowing how to deviate when range is wider and, and understand what boards kind of deserve more of a check with kind of bad blockers and stuff like that, even though you you, you, you still have showdown value with that hand, for example, it's, it, it's also very important to understand the thresholds of that. And size and wise here in the turn, I don't mind. You can go half pot as well. I think either or is G. But always bluffing river, obviously. Up in there, fine. Yeah, the fours here. I'd nearly rather check this again on the turn, bro, and then Bluff River. We've very little showdown value here, but we are still ahead of some. But like, we're probably never going to get to realize that by the river. But like, fours. When you when you think about all the other hands, you can start bluffing here. I'm not sure fours is going to do that. Like, the thing is, I'd probably bluff fours here on the river if it goes check, check again on the turn, is what I'd rather do here. Yeah, I mean... I just think, again, this is a bad hand to do it with. I'd honestly rather just check fold turn facing a bet than end up trying to bluff this in this situation, honestly. Um, look, you're going to lose. You're going to lose here a lot, in my opinion. And this node is extremely, extremely overbluffed as well. Extremely overbluffed.
yeah. Not 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 particularly a fan of of, of bluffing here's uh, bluffing fours here, mate. Um, yeah, just better hands to do it with, bro. Just better hands to do it with. And it's 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 a pretty bad river to bluff as well because a lot of times in paired rivers, uh, either the imp imposition player is going to connect with this king, or they're just going to be way less likely to fold any ASX they might have checked back on the flop, or basically any pair for that matter. I think that might be a mixed called fold in them positions. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Well, you know, if you have information that that guy was tight, then fold in there most of the time is probably going to be fine. Not going to say too much about that. Uh, high frequency bet here is the name of the game. Taking it down, nice. I'm probably just range bet a lot of them king high and ace high boards, man. Well, definitely king high a lot of the time. You can just range bet. There might be some boards you might want to check at a higher frequency, but the rainbow ones in particular can always just range bet, or a lot of the time, either for half pot. Well, it depends. Like king high disconnected, you can go for half pot. Uh, king high connected, you can probably just go for 25% for the most part. And the A6 as well, bro, you kind of still have a little bit of showdown value there. I don't mind betting it on a low roll, but again, blind v blind here, bro, ace high plays pretty well with showdown potential. So then what, what, what I'm kind of noticing already, bro, is like your level of understanding when you do and don't have showdown value is kind of an issue. Because what end up happening is, man, you start betting hands that still have showdown value against the part against like certain parts of his range, and that can be a big indicator of somebody having a losing red line. Now my red line is losing. Don't get me wrong, but that's more so from maybe investing in spots where I need to double barrel. I have to give up on river, and then overfalling it on the bluff nodes. But I do think my understanding of like the threshold of like showdown value when I do and don't have it is pretty goddamn good. In a lot of positions, in a lot of nodes in particular. So that would be something I would tell you to work on. How you work on that, mate, is just studying grids by marking hands mostly, is what I would recommend. Because it's a little bit difficult to do it otherwise, unless you kind of just have this natural feel, which you know I never had to be honest. I had to kind of you know develop that over time. So I would start working on that now. It's just one of those things that takes time, mate. But we saw a good few examples with the fours, the ace, king. Uh, there might have been one other example that I can't remember in particular, but it did happen quite recently in this video. So just, just examples like that alone, mate, can, can actually affect your win rate because you're over-investing in spots that you don't need to. Uh, so that's always important to take into account. Uh, seven, eight here, we just always check calling versus half pot. And um, we're going to bluff river, obviously, if it checks through. Uh, half pot, three quarters, probably is what I do here, mate. Yeah, I think this is fine on this paired river. Because if you overbet here in particular, this node will be overfolded, don't get me wrong. But I think size and wise, you need to pick a size that makes sense with your range here. And mostly three quarters with a lot of king x here is going to be fine. So you're basically repping king x here on the river. And saying that, you do obviously have a lot of brick draws here, like 7-5. You know, just missed, just good shots, flush draws itself. So I will be bluff catching here pretty aggressively against this sizing. But obviously when someone checks back that turn there when they're probably meant to be barreling it quite aggressively on that queen turn card. With a lot of air hands, by the way, from the imposition's perspective. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a very, very capped range by, by the imposition player. Uh, so again like that, mate. Check raising on this board with this hand is going to be a, a very common play. Or at least I feel it will be. So, look, again, RNG based decision here, rolling high. Yeah, we go for a check. I like it. Um, and then size and wise on this turn again, like high RNG, I would check again. Like it. I like it, mate. Well played. And unfortunately, the motherfucker doesn't take the bait, which is obviously a bit of a heartbreaker when you have this hand. Yeah, and again, excuse me, timing wise and how quick he caught the check the flop and check the turn, bro. I would rather just overbet here and just make him bluff catch with sort of any one pair of hands. 
but you're just going to get a bunch of folds in this node anyway so it's not a big big issue yeah i mean it's unfortunate but it is what it is mate i don't think you did anything wrong there on that rng i would always be checking twice flop and turn especially blind v blind again like that people are going to reopen way more in the check 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 and then bet line from the imposition perspective so that's important to take into account as well that queen eight i might start calling but i'm not sure if it's a mixed call fold the queen eight might be a fold i know king eight's a call half the time i think versus min and that's another thing you're going to see as well a shared a shared characteristic of pool that they're over falling versus min which is obviously a big win for somebody who's opening for min in general uh it's one of the reasons why i do it because i know population on gg are over falling versus min opens and i and, and i did a play and explain earlier on where i recorded it for 25 and i think on gg people just had like check just like the the, the the fold button auto done or if they're using this you know race first in kind of software to fold whatever they need to fold and defend whatever they need to defend it, it, it's just like free money to min, min race open boys because the risk reward is just like printing um again like that makes you probably did an rng based decision for the ace queen nice nice over about there i don't mind betting any size in there against the recreational there on that node with the queen too So yeah, probably, yeah, this is one thing I don't like to do in general. And even more so, not against a short stack recreational. And another thing as well is versus 2.5. So the only time I might incentivize cold calling in any situation here is when it's a min open or 2.1. And versus 2.5, lads. You should mostly be playing a three better fall strategy in particular versus the race first in when you're in position here like you would be with seven. So like you're better off three betting sevens here, mate. Although I wouldn't do it against this stack size as well, just to make that very, very clear. Um, so yeah, do take that into account, mate, as well. That like don't really ever call call outside of the big blind versus 2.5 unless it's potentially multi-way already. Um, but when it's just a single call call or, or you have the option to call call itself, don't don't bother versus two point five. Just three bet mostly for the for in general because the race first in size is bigger. I would just check back the sevens again. Like the problem is here, you betting this, it doesn't really benefit from doing it, because you're going to get called by still too many worse hands. Oh, sorry, too many better hands, and also potentially get raised where you don't get to realize your equity here with the up and down. Like this is a, another example of understanding the thresholds of like when you have enough short on value just to check back and you know just over investing in the spot that you just don't need to bro and this is this is this is a big thing in your game right now which is um which is not helping which is not helping like just check back the turn or just check back the turn bro just 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 check back, check back the turn here like if you get two falls here fair enough it doesn't matter like when you when you move up to bigger stakes man or or, or whatever the aspirations are with poker people in especially in the big blind here for example they will protect their double check range and the reason why they can do that is because the player in the hijack although he is a recreational we'll say this is two regs for example like they will protect their double check range in the big blind because the hijack player or the player that's sandwiched in the middle is going to be checking high frequency on the flop as well so the big blind incentivizes itself to double check to let the hijack reopen again and the big blind can go for a check raise itself um so when you understand that that's the general characteristic in this situation you will not want to bet sevens here mate you will not want to bet sevens now when the hijack checks again that range is just air but you still have to worry about the big blind but it's not so much even in this situation if the big blind isn't protecting that double check range he still has a lot of ace x that won't go for three that, that won't go for this two streets of value here so you're targeting such a narrow narrow range of hands here that you beat um and as i said if you ever get check raised here mate it's a fucking disaster because you only have an up and down yeah you're in position and all that stuff and you're getting like you you, you have them outs it's not enough to bet this turn man when you're in position just check back in my opinion all right so that's that's three or four examples uh raver or river 
um, that we've saw, nice format by the way, that we saw uh, where you're just kind of betting hands, you don't need to bet bro. So I would just tread carefully on that. I would tread carefully for that in future, mate. We can talk about that again, but there's definitely a, 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 there's definitely too many examples in a, what, how many minutes are we into this right now? 23 minutes into this, mate, it's just too many examples that we saw so far, so, you know, as I said, if you got two folds there with the sevens, it might look like a good play. I don't think it is, mate. I think it's too, too thin. It's 9-5 as well, man. It's probably going to be a fold versus the cutoff. I'd be defending this min open versus small blind versus big blind. But versus the cutoff, I would just fold this and probably defend like 9-7, 9-6 off suit maybe. But that 9-5, nine, 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 I would just fold, bro. 9-5, I would just fold. But yeah, as I say to everyone, River, um, just when you when you do watch this sweat session review, um, just be sure to take notes. Be sure to take a lot of notes uh, in what I highlight uh, and whatever else and kind of try, try and make your own analysis as to why I'm saying that and does it make sense that I'm saying that? Because personally myself, I think it does, especially in the exams that we spoke about. Um, because, you know, if you stay making these mistakes, man, or these kind of, yeah, these, these thresholds of not understanding when you have showdown value over bluffing hands that still have showdown value or turning hands into a bluff that still have this kind of like showdown value, very little at times, I get that, but still enough against certain parts of a person's range, yeah, you, you're definitely going to be affecting your, your win rate in, in the long run overall, in my opinion. And we just have to check for all the ace king, that's fine. We're going to be double checking a lot of over pairs there again, so we don't have to be checked calling ace king high. 7 8 we're going to defend. And we do have to defend probably any pocket pair here, bar anything under the 7. We're giving away a back doors with the 8. So this is the spot where I actually don't mind squeezing. Probably wouldn't be calling too often here, but it's four or, or squeeze size in here, 10 big blinds I like. And just a very easy check down here, yeah. Just we're going to lose here a decent amount of time, but that's fine. No problem at all. I get called pretty quickly from your man under the gun. All right. So this is going to be interesting. I'm going to go for a bet here. But size and wise here, you can size down a little bit more, mate. So usually... If you're betting 33 here, heads up in a multi-way spot. Three bet pots multi-way shouldn't happen too often. But when they do, sizing down is going to be the, it's going to be the flop, flop strategy here in general. Okay, so take that into account here. But if we get called here, I might check back turn to realize equity. But we just get two folds. So that's very, very nice. I honestly would have checked back on that eight man after getting called in the flop. I might have done. I might have done. But people are overfolding in them situations. But again, people in squeeze pots, in three bit pots in general, they shouldn't happen too often multi way. Um, again, I wouldn't be opening this queen seven. I mean, maybe there's a justification for a fish in the blind, but you have to worry about five other players behind me. And, you know, doing that with queen seven suited, it's something to take into account there. Again, what I tend to do, I don't do it anymore, but it's, it's what I was doing for a while is that anything that might be mixed. Uh, raise folds in theory I would just shift to a pure raise when there's a recreation in the big blind but I was told to stop doing that and just play optimally optimal ranges under the gun and hijack and then when I get to the cutoff open anything that might be mixed full frequency with a fish in the blind because you have less players to worry about behind mostly and size and wise on this two-tone texture, man, I think any size in here is fine. Bam, um, overbet on this ace, or sorry, 10 low, low boards. So two thirds, I wouldn't go any bigger than two thirds here, put it that way, but I think half pot. I'd probably go 33 here or 25 myself personally. But we do have to float here with the queen of spades. Yeah, we have to call with the queen of spades and, and the back door's two overs. And if he checks here, we're just going to start bluffing. 
yeah, just an easy fall. This is such a terrible, terrible sizing by him. So, so bad. Like, I, I don't know if I need to explain why it's so bad because he's basically betting pot into a range that has nuts. You're just not allowed to do that, lads. Because you're, you're just like, again, this is what I have. It's just, you're basically telling the other player this is what you have. And, and you also get so many other hands that might have a difficult decision versus 33 here on the turn. Um, you know, facing that sizing, that like, you know, top pair, no spade, for example, might still have to call one on the turn, although I do think that's going to be a fold on the turn already. Um, it, ju it just makes your entire range easy to play and you only continue like basically hands that can like, you know, improve to the nuts. Uh, I.e. sets, for example, or that, that even might be close there in general, but either way, that sizing is never used, never ever used on the turn in, in, in that situation there for the most part. So we might actually get through all of this, mate. There's four or five minutes left and around 51 minutes, so we should be good. It's uh, should be good to get through all of it, which is nice. Open this ace jack here. I like that. I like the fact that you're marking these players, man. It's a good habit to get into, man. It doesn't change this as you move up the stakes. So nice that you're doing that, man. As I said, it's nice to see that you are doing it simply because um he said you watch all the material and all that stuff, which is which is great. Which is great. And 10 obviously opening there. <clears throat> King Queen is going to be a mix. Three vet and call. So obviously calling at a frequency is fine. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's overfalling too much, mate. Overfalling too much there. Cannot fall King High there, especially King Queen with a diamond. I honestly don't think I'd be falling any King High here. Like King 10, King Jack plus. I would never be falling here versus Bet Small. I cannot be falling King Queen here with a diamond, mate. Way too much of an overfall there. Like I'd be, fall I'd be calling this versus every single formation. Every single formation. Uh, and I'd rather just check this back on the turn to capitalize on an overbluff against the recreational. So this is one thing that you need to recognize that like when you're against a recreational man and you ask yourself, does this hand have three streets of value? If the answer is no on the turn, always check back to capitalize on an overbluff here, mate. It's going to generate way more EV in practice. Like betting this wouldn't be a mistake, but... If you check back that turn, mate, you're literally calling every single river for every single size and above, or sorry, below, pot size, pot size and below, I should say, without, without, without any question, without any question, bro. And 7-8, I think it's going to be a pure raise, but it could be a low frequency call. Three better mean, excuse me. Usually on rainbow textures, man, you want to size up to half pot. Or a little bit more polar, but exploitatively, I don't mind betting one or I don't mind betting small. I don't mind betting small at all. But you get raised here, just gonna call in position. I mean, easy fold there. Ah, uh, we kind of have to fold here now, unfortunately. Not a lot we can do here.
yeah, she's going to be falling there now. Not a lot we can do, bro. Just it is what it is. We'll continue any pair there. Obviously, flush draw. Stuff like that. Yeah, we're coming up to the end of the video anyway, mate. So yeah, it's gonna be around the 56, 57 minute mark. So that's gonna be A1. That's gonna be good. Uh 10 9 here is gonna be a mixed four bet and call. It's gonna be calling against his profile. Now I might end up check raising this flop, but I don't think I'm not sure if there's any benefit against this guy in particular because of how tight he is. If he goes for a half pot bet here, I will just uh fold. But against smaller sizes, I might be tempted. Yeah, it's just gonna be an easy check fold here. Yeah. It's going to be an easy check fold. I do think we're coming to the end of the session here now. And that's basically it, mate. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, man. The, 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 the threshold of the showdown value and shit like that is probably where I saw the biggest leaks in general. Um, you know, that king-queen with the queen of diamonds might be an indicator as well that you're probably overfalling flops versus bet small. Um, definitely can't be doing that as you move up the stakes. Um, look, as I said, I'm not too sure what stakes this was, but my advice and just general guidelines won't really change that much, man. Um, and that's just from, you know, playing for a long time. But, um, as I said, when you do watch this, mate, just leave a comment in the comment section below and, uh, just make notes, man. Just make more notes on, uh. On, on everything I said throughout this video. There's a lot of stuff I think I mentioned. But it's obviously very, very difficult for me to remember. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the review, guys. And uh, thanks again, Reaver, for sending in the footage, bro. I'm sure you'll be talking again in the future. So thanks, everyone, for joining. And thanks, for everyone, for watching. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.